All right. Once you've kind of got the hang of SketchUp, we're going to get a little bit more um, into how to build specific shaped objects. So your assignment, um, your first assignment really is to build small little one inch by one inch cubes and stack them up to spell your name. Okay. So if I, and here's what I would do first. Go ahead and scroll down towards his foot. So whether you're using the mouse wheel to scroll in, or if you're not using a mouse, you can hit Z for zoom and scroll in. Get yourself down to looking at the person's foot, just so we can kind of have that as a sense of scale when we build these little one inch blocks, okay? All right, so if you remember from the last time, um, we talked about the R tool or rectangle. So go ahead and hit R. Now, I made a big deal last time about not holding down your mouse button while you draw stuff, otherwise it just auto places it once you release, okay? The reason why it's a good idea to just click once to start your shape, and then again, hands off my mice at this point, so I can just kind of like move my mouse, and again, I'm not placing it yet, I'm not clicking to finalize it. The reason why that's important is because I can go and type in a specific size shape, for example, and have it set to that, okay? So what I want you to do is again, make sure you have a good view, kind of looking down towards his foot a little bit, and I want you to hit R for rectangle, so we're on that rectangle tool, and again, click once to start your shape, don't hold the mouse button down, just click once to start it, just so you can see that outline going, okay? Now, it's kind of my, my face is kind of covering it, to be honest, but like right below where I am down here, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a dimensions box. Um, so as I move my mouse around, you can see it's like, it's showing the dimensions of, or size of whatever my box is. I don't need to actually click in this box ever, you can't, okay? But while I'm moving my mouse around and seeing my box, I can just go to my keyboard and type the size that I want. So if I want a one inch by one inch box, I can simply type one comma one. You can see down in my dimensions box that it um, it turned into that. All right. So if I hit enter to place it, it drops it in. I'll do that one more time. I On my rectangle tool, I click once to start. I type in one comma one for a one by one box. If I hit enter, it places a one inch by one inch box, okay? So that's a really helpful thing to do because you know if later you need to have like a six by 18 inch rectangle for like a cardboard piece for a, the thing we're gonna do later on, that's how you set specific sizes, all right? So with my little one inch by one inch block, we need to take it from a flat surface and push it up so that it becomes a cube, okay? So we're going to use our P tool or push pull and same concept applies. I'm going to click once to start. Again, don't hold your mouse button down or else this won't work. Okay. Once you kind of click and start the process, I can go and type however much I want to push it. In this case, one, hit enter. Once I type in one enter, it sets it to one inch and places it. I'll do that again one more time. I click once to start my push pull. I move my mouse just so I can kind of start the process. Not holding it down. I type in the, the amount that I want it to push pull, one, and then hit enter and it sets it. Okay. It's really important to know that if you hit if you type in one and then not enter yet, and then you start moving your mouse around, it's not gonna work, right? So you have to again type it in, hit enter, and then place it, and then you can go and start moving it around. Okay? So you should have a one inch by one inch square. Now, we didn't talk about this too much the last time, but here's a real important concept. If you hit select, I'm sorry, spacebar, it's your select tool, okay? Uh, you can notice if you click on individual sides, it selects indiv like all the faces. Um, if you triple click, notice how all of it turns blue. So either by triple clicking so that the whole thing is blue, or you could like drag your mouse around that whole block, you know, and take the whole thing. Either way, um, you want to make sure that the entire thing is selected. Whenever you're done editing a shape in SketchUp, meaning, all right, I'm good with this box, I don't need to change it anymore, or I'm going to like put stuff on top of it, I need this to be its own separate piece, we need to kind of like finalize the piece. Now, the way that you do it is once it's all selected, if you just right click it and say, make it a group. That basically finalizes that piece so that, you know, if you click on and off of it now, uh, you can see it's like all blue highlighted or not. So it's like a finished thing. Here's why we have to do that. So I'm going to control Z real quick to undo just to show you why. 
if I want to start stacking these blocks, and I'll show you how to copy in a, and move in a second, but I'll just show you what's going to happen if I don't make it a group ahead of time. So let's say I paste a bunch of these that are not separated out into their own separate groups. So I grab this one and move it into place. Because I didn't make those separate finalized groups, what happens now is if I try to like move this piece around, you can see they all get stuck together. And if I try to like, let's say I wanted to like do something to this middle block and I try to select it all, well, I can't because it's all one big full smooshed together shape. So I can't really just move one piece anymore without them all interacting, okay? So if I were to make them a group, so select it all, right click, make it a group, select it all, right click, make it a group, etc. Um, now, if I were to move it together, you can see they're separate. It's not going to like get stuck or do anything that's going to mess us up, right? They are separate individual pieces, all right? So at this point, you should, let me fix that real quick. So you should have selected your whole box, right click, make it a group. Now let's talk about how to make copies of this now. You've got two options really. You can do the kind of standard computer thing of control C, control V, which is copy paste. And then I can just keep tapping control V, control V, control V, posting a bunch of them. That's one way. Okay. The other way, the way that I kind of prefer is to hit M for move. So, you know, M is your move tool, if you haven't tried that yet. Normally, M lets you move stuff around on its own. Um, however, if you tap the control key while you have the move tool, I don't know if you can notice on my screen, but when I tap the, the control key with my M tool selected, it makes a little plus sign. That means it's a copy move instead of just a normal move. So control toggles on like a copy version of that tool. So now, if I drag it out, it just drags a copy out. Okay, it's a nice then to, if I were to just wanted to make a stack of these, I could just grab that little corner, hit M and then control for a copy and just drag it right up. And then control again, drag it up, control again, drag it up. Oops, I kind of missed. That's a real quick way to start stacking your letters. Okay, um, when you're trying to stack stuff together, notice how these are like all scattered on the ground right now. They look like they're kind of close, but sometimes it's a little tricky. So if you want to move stuff and attach them together, so M for move, right? Um, if I try to just drag the like from the middle of the shape, so I just kind of click the middle of it and start moving it, it's really hard to try to like stack it because it's trying to inference wherever like I click. So like, see, I was like trying to get the middle onto stuff. I don't want the middle there. I want the, the bottom, right? So whenever you are trying to connect stuff in SketchUp, always drag corner to corner. And you can even see it gives me like this little purple circle when I hover over it. So if I want this corner to stack on top, it would be this corner to this corner, right? So I just do that. I click and place it. So I select my other one. Now let's say on this one, I want it to go like over here. Let's say I'm trying to make like a P or something. Again, think about it. I want this top corner to attach to this corner, right? So I click the corner. I drag it up to that corner and place it. I'll select my other one, move tool. Maybe I just slide it up here. Again, if I want this one to be like underneath now for a P, this corner would attach to that corner. You get the idea. So I'll finish it off. So again, I'm dragging corner to corner and you can see as I orbit around, it's all one big shape. Sometimes I've seen people where, you know, if I have a shape here, just say it's like all the way back here in space. Sometimes I've seen people where it's like, well, I mean, it's kind of hard to get the camera there, but sometimes it's like, oh, it looks like it's stacked on top, but in reality, it's all the way back here. So corner to corner is how you're going to be able to like make sure things are attaching, right? So that corner, and sometimes you can see like it's my camera angle is a real big problem sometimes. So sometimes it's a matter of just angling your camera to a good viewpoint and selecting, all right, I know that that corner has to go to there. So sometimes just changing the camera angle can help. So your assignment then is to make your name out of blocks. And you can only, you don't have to worry. If your name's huge, you don't have to do more than like five or so letters. Um, I think five or six is probably good. By the way, 
if you, let's say you have two P's in your name, um, what you could do, or actually, like, here, let's just do this. Um, let's say my name was Patrick, because this P could easily turn into an A. What I could do is just select all of it, and then hit my move tool, tap the control key. Remember, that gives me a copy move. I could slide one of these right over here. So you can copy more than just one block at a time. And then maybe now I just, you know, hit my move, tap control, just drag a couple of these down by I'm hitting control a couple times. There's a P and an A real quick. So instead of having to do all those buttons again, it makes it a little quicker. And maybe if I was doing a T, I could select all those. And then again, I could copy and paste. So control C and control V. But again, control, when you do that, it becomes a little bit hard to keep it all in line. Okay. That's why I prefer to select them, hit M for move, control for a, a copy. And you can see it kind of sliding along that red line. That keeps it along that axis so we know that it's all on the same plane. Okay. And then again, M, control for a copy, move it over. And again, I kind of dragged the wrong corner there. So I'd probably want to drag from this corner out so that it stays right in line. Then again, I could move all those. You get the idea. Okay, so play around, make some blocks, make them groups. Don't forget to make a block a group. Once you do, you can just copy that group a hundred times, right? Um, so try to spell your name. And if you want to make it pretty, you can hit B for paint bucket and you can color them if you want, but that's just kind of for fun. You don't have to. Um, and then when you're done, you'll just use your snipping tool, take a picture, and then there will be a canvas assignment for that. Good luck, practice. This is a really important concept. So make sure you're getting the hang of um, grouping things and moving things around. All right, good luck, try your best, see what you can get to work.